Apple Knocker Radio. All right, greetings, friends. Today's book review is going to be quite a bit different than my normal book reviews. The reason is because the book that I'm going to talk about today has a very personal connection to my life. I've actually been putting off making new videos because I want to get my lighting and my home studio space in better shape. I've been meaning to do that ever since I've moved to a new house. Uh, but I really want to talk about this book right now, so I'm just going to do it. Um, the book that I am referring to, Near Death Experiences by PMH Atwater. Now, when I mentioned that this would be unlike any other book review, what I was referring to was one of the most profound moments of my entire life. Um, I say that without exaggeration or in no hyperbole whatsoever. One of the most profound moments of my life was reading this book just after I had gotten out from the military, just after I had witnessed uh, a friend die, and a had had what I can only describe as a a religious experience. I talked about it on a previous video. I think I may have taken the video down. I kind of periodically take the video down because I don't normally like doing really personal videos. It makes me feel weird. But whether that one is up or not, suffice it to say I was overseas, had a very profound uh, experience, <clears throat> um, which is largely what led me to start this channel. And when I came back to the United States, after having had that experience, I read this book because I was trying to understand what had happened to me. Um, and it was, you know, it was almost like... A, I don't know, synchronous, that I chose this book of all the books on near-death experiences because, well, I don't want to talk too much about my, myself or my own story. I, I want to talk about this book. But I just thought talking about my own story would be a good entryway into the book. Because, all right, when you're speaking about near-death experiences, uh, at least with Atwater, and I believe Raymond Moody was the same way, and I believe it's the, the general approach for people who spend, um, who are professional researchers of the topic. What a lot of people um, misunderstand is that a near-death experience as the way that generally somebody like Atwater would define it, and as she discusses in this book, it's not just, you know, you step out into the street and a car runs by and you you get scared and you jump back. Like a lot of people think of that as a near death experience and that's fine. And I'm going to get to that because she actually goes into a little bit in the book about those kinds of experiences. But when you're talking about like a true near death experience, you're talking, there's, there's two really key things into it. Number one is the person actually clinically dies, right? You actually die and then come back, whether you're resuscitated or you just spontaneously come back, whatever it is. But number two, in a, a like a true near-death experience, <clears throat> when the person comes back, they show measurable changes, some of which are shocking. Some might not be that surprising, because you hear about, uh, it's relatively often, relatively frequent, that you'll hear people come back and they, you know, they say they're more peaceful in their lives, or they feel a greater sense of peace, things of that nature. That's kind of expected. But Atwater talks about how there are actual physiological changes in people afterwards, which I found really fascinating. Um, there are things like um, people tend to become more productive. There was, I think there was, um, if I remember correctly, it was the, uh, the, like the electrical charge that the body produces actually measurably changes afterwards. Um, I don't want to get too much into specifics because it's possible my memory will be twisted and I don't want to get things wrong because I don't want to do the book injustice. And I don't want to make myself look like a fool. But, so when you're talking about near, the, or when she's talking about near-death experiences, it's not merely stepping off a curb almost getting hit by a car and being like, whoo, I nearly died. It's different than that. It's, you know, it's people actually dying. I did not have an experience like that overseas. I witnessed death. 
Um, and for some reason, on this particular occasion, it wasn't the first time I witnessed death, but for some reason, something happened. Zzz, zap. Zzz, uh, and I don't want to make light of it because it wasn't a light thing. But I'm also trying to avoid making this about myself because I don't want to do that. Just suffice it to say, I went through a lot of the what it normally characterized with near-death experiences. Like I went through my whole old previous life. I went through every moment of my life. I relived all of the things that I had done wrong. And I felt the incredible, unconditional love that you hear other people talk about. But this was happening to me while I was totally conscious. It's really bizarre without going into it. But um, a great thing about this book is that Atwater touches upon it. What, what I should say is Atwater has written multiple books. I don't know how many. I, sh I should have written that down first. But um, you know, her whole career was spent researching the subject. In this book, I, mean, I don't know if she has since gone on to write more um, since then. You know, a lot of people say they're retiring, but then don't really do it. But this was supposed to be sort of the culmination of all of her work, where she just puts it all out on the table. Um, not only the research, but her own ideas about what this all means, which is why the book was so profound to me. When I read this book, North Cascades National Park, campground up or a campsite up in the mountains, sitting by a stream, I sat down. I remember this clear as day. I sat down, figured I'd read a couple pages and then go for a hike. I just sat there and read this book. And I didn't, I read it from cover to cover, but I didn't read it without, like, I would read a few pages and sit there staring into the, sh the creek. Just, man. It's like I could feel, could feel angels around me. It was, uh,. It was it was an amazing experience. It, it's a weird thing to say that one of your most profound. You know, I've lived honestly. I've lived a pretty adventurous life. Like I've done a lot of crazy stuff. But when I think back, one of the most profound, powerful memories was sitting by a creek reading this book. I'll never forget it. It was intense, <clears throat> and it actually did feel like there were some kind of other beings there with me, other consciousnesses there with me. Um, as I was trying to understand what had happened to me and what it all meant. But, so, Atwater gets into her research notes. This book is full of interviews. Um, those are great. I don't want to marginalize that at all. But you can also get that not only in a lot of books, but on a lot of YouTube channels and such. I mean, it's pretty easy to find um, personal accounts of near-death experiences. What I loved about this book then and what I love about it now is that Atwater goes deep. She asks the questions, what does this actually mean, right? Um, I think because it was later in her career and she no longer had to fend off the, the critical assassins that were out there, you know, they're always out there trying to shoot such things down. Um, oh, the, also, sorry, this is just coming to me. Every couple of years you'll read or see on the news some scientist or somebody will be out saying like, oh, we figured out the real explanation for why this near-death experience has happened. Atwater does a great job of going into all of those claims and breaking down why they're not valid. <clears throat> or at least that they need significantly more research to prove their validity. But most of them have just basic philosophical problems that don't add up. So that's a good section. But anyway, so Atwater goes back. It was towards the end of her career, and or at the end of her career. And um, so she wasn't afraid to just let it all hang out. And so she comes out with some really hard-hitting um, ideas about like, what does this actually mean? Um, because it goes beyond, yes, there is an afterlife. Like, it goes to the question of human consciousness itself, which has always been my driving concern you know I feel like in these spaces I don't even know what to call this space but you have people who are into the paranormal right but they're not even just that now you have even that has become so specialized like you have like people who are really into ghosts then you have people really into Bigfoot then you have people who are really into UFOs and then you have people who are into the occult you have people who are into hermeticism 
or then you have people who are into esoteric Christianity, um, or you have people who are specifically just really into near-death experiences. Swedenborgians, like you have all these people from these various schools. Um, I I explore all of it, and I I don't really feel um, tied down to any of it. I mean, esoteric Christianity, es uh, Christian Hermeticism is that's definitely my main. That's what most of my own personal beliefs revolve around. However, um, I will delve into all of these things because to me it's the underlying question, the underlying question of the consciousness that's underneath it all. What, is that, what does that mean and what does that imply for everything? And Atwater goes deep with that in this book. Um, that's the main reason why I would recommend it so much. I mean, because of the eclectic nature of this channel, I always hesitate to um, generalize too much about the people that have subscribed to it. But I imagine that most of you out there are people who are also really interested in things like consciousness and um, esotericism. Well, people who are really interested in consciousness specifically is what I was trying to get at. Um, and this underlying idea of what does it all actually mean, you know? And Atwater goes deep with it, and she has some great answers, or answers. She gives her opinion. She gives her opinion, which I would say is a way of giving answers. But she's not dogmatic in it. She's open-minded in her approach. And um, she asks as many questions as she gives answers. But she definitely gives her own conceptual um idea of what this all means and the reason why the reason why this ties into my story and why my story and this book are kind of interlaced is because Atwater discusses that while in her research she would have these um, categories for what like an, a real near-death experience is what a near-death experience was also she recognized that people had something that was very akin to a near-death experience, even though they didn't have near-death episodes as she defines them. She discusses, for instance, people being in the room with somebody who has died, and the, the living person watching the dying person has flashes of a near-death experience. Um, she discusses later in the book some statistics about how many people, it's, it's actually quite common, have moments of awakening, which is a term that I feel has been kind of tarnished over the last few years. I'm always hesitant to use it, but I understand and respect the way that Atwater uses it. The awakening experiences, um, which are not near-death experiences, well, they sometimes are, but the vast majority are not. Um, it's just people going about and something flashes and all of a sudden they just see reality differently, right? And that is why that's where the real mystery is. And that's where the real big questions are. And those are the questions that a lot of people hesitate, especially the people who come at this from a more scientific perspective. And for understandable reasons, because they have careers to protect and reputations to protect. You know, in science, you can't go around just throwing out guesses without risking getting attacked and discredited. <clears throat> um, but Atwater does ask these big questions. She asks, well, what, is, what does this all actually mean if people can have this experience without actually biologically dying? And um, in most of these cases, these experiences aren't as intense as somebody who actually biologically dies. I know mine wasn't. It was as intense to me. It literally changed my life. I mean, it measurably changed my life. You could look back to my life from before that happened to after, and I could show you measurable ways that, it, that my life changed after that. But still, it wasn't the same as somebody like an Eben Alexander or, or any of these people who actually clinically died and came back. I would never compare my experience to that because I've studied enough to know that they're different. But in essence... They are very similar. And, yeah. And so, in essence, they are very similar. And so then the question, again, comes back to consciousness. What does it all mean? And I don't want to give spoilers, um, because I, I, 
I don't know if any of, any of you have noticed. I only I only talk about books that I would uh, recommend to people. I don't do negative reviews. I just don't really see the point of it, and it's just not the kind of headspace I like to live in. <clears throat> but this book, perhaps more than any of the other, other books that I have discussed, this is a book that I so sincerely recommend, and uh, I would just love for people to read this. It, it gave me so much peace and it's just a great read it's a really great book and i um i highly recommend it to everybody out there and i guess that's about it this is one of those subjects that i could just talk for a couple hours because it's so personal to me but um but i'll just leave it at that i will leave it at that check this book out for real um you know, so I always like to buy new copies when I buy books because I want that money to go to the author. You know, when you buy those secondhand books on Amazon, <clears throat> the money doesn't go to the author. But however you get, however you need to do it, if you find one of these, I saw used copies on Amazon for this for like ninety nine cents. Um, whatever it takes, any means, man, check the book out. Really, it's a it's amazing. It's a profound book. And if you do get around to reading and checking it out, please leave comments below. I, I want to hear your thoughts. Um, like I said, it's one that's very personal to me. And um, I would sincerely like to, to hear how, how it works for you. So that's about it. Uh, peace out, my friends. I hope you are all doing well. I hope you are staying fixated on, or fixated, fixed on your goals and um, on, on the light in your life. Because these are challenging times. So... But the good guys always win in the end. Alright. Peace out, my friends.